Hello everyone, Dr. Mandel here with you. I'm hoping you're having a beautiful day, beautiful night, regardless of where you are worldwide. We are streaming live. Uh, today's topic will all be about self-traction of the neck. Uh, most of my uh, subscribers, as well as if you are new watching this video, I'm sure that you have some type of issue pertaining to your neck, uh, nerve, disc, uh, degeneration, uh, spondylosis, arthritis, whatever you may be having. And I have some great information I want to share with you and I want to get right to it because I'm going to give you some uh, little techniques that you can do at home that hopefully will take away a lot of your pain, pressure off the nerve and help increase mobility so your body can repair and heal. Uh, let's go into it. Uh, right here. First uh, thing I want to mention to you, uh, most of our conditions that we deal with are forward head posture. Forward head posture uh, generally means that, you know, your your head is forward. Just shows you normal weight of a head is 12 pounds. For every inch you go forward, it's an additional 10 pounds. Two inches is 32 pounds. Uh, three inches is 42 pounds. And it gets worse the further you go. Now, the downside of that is that we are getting silent degeneration. Degeneration means uh, the bones start to get spur formation, osteophytes. We start getting degeneration. The discs start to uh, inflame. And um, we eventually have pain, discomfort. Uh, so we go here, and I just want to show you the effects of spinal nerves. Many people don't realize this, but these nerves in the cervical spine here control everything going on from the glands to the nose to the eyes to the sinuses, to the fingers, to the shoulders, as we know, back to the head, to the headaches. Uh, they control everything. Look at those common symptoms. You can come back to this later. Uh, a lot of people are experiencing anywhere from headaches to anxiety to visual disturbances, uh, sinusitis to vertigo to tingling. Uh, the list goes on. This just shows you that these nerves do cover all those different areas. And so don't be surprised just because, you know, you may be having a headache or, or a little twinge back here. Everything is controlling something. Uh, for every cause, there's an effect. For every effect, there's a cause. Our objective here is not to j just to look at symptoms and not just take away symptoms. Or, uh, you know, I tell you to take the Advil, the Motrin, the Proxen. Uh, I can tell you to take many kinds of drugs. That's not going to get rid of the causation. So the key important thing is the majority of people who have neck problems are tied into forward head posture. Forward head posture from texting on your smartphone, from keeping your arms out in front of you, from driving, from using your computer, looking down, reading, as well as uh, being laid up in bed with the pillow propped behind your head, not sleeping correctly, all puts a burden upon the spine. Uh, just to show you, as we look at the spine from the side here, the curve should be a normal C-shaped curve. The majority of people have a straightening. Many have a reversal. And uh, I won't go into that right now in this particular video. But as that, uh, if you look here at this picture right here, it shows a golf ball being put on a, uh, a tip. Obviously, the, you put the golf ball on there and it stays balanced. And uh, obviously, as uh, that golf ball starts to slip off of that peg right there because the head is forward, it cannot stabilize it correctly. So what happens is when the head becomes straight or it becomes more forward, that compression is no longer uh, coming down on the back part of the vertebrae away from the discs. Now the compression is all coming on the front of the vertebrae. That's where the disc spaces are. That's important because as you go forward, that weight's compressing on that disc, and that's why the discs start to degenerate, and that's why uh, you start affecting nerves, and that's why this becomes a silent degeneration, just like cancer or just like uh, high blood pressure or cancer, uh, I'm sorry, or, um, or diabetes, uh, because it's silent until eventually it gets to a point to where symptoms start to explode. In this situation, it's spondylosis, it's degeneration, it's osteoarthritis, until eventually those nerves start to become inflamed and irritated. So that's really important you understand that. So a lot of this, we have to realize that we need to be more aware of our position of our head because I can tell you that 9 out of 10 times, your neck pain is related to poor posture. That I can promise you, again, acute injuries uh, can cause it too, but we're talking for the vast majority of people throughout worldwide, it's poor head posture that's being put on a neck incorrectly. And over the time, the body is, over being, is overworn, and which obviously causes degeneration. 
If you look here, this just shows you that there is always a gravitational weight being pushed down on the spine. Uh, we are working against gravity. Uh, this just shows us that what goes on below, uh, again, with our shoulders, uh, with our chest, uh, with our lower back and how we stand and how we sit all affect our balance of our head. So obviously, as the weight is coming down with our head over our shoulders, we have more stabilization. As the weight is coming down, as our head goes forward, we have less stabilization and we start developing more degeneration. So this takes us into our pinched nerve. Uh, now, as we start getting more degeneration on the disc and as the vertebrae start to degenerate, we start developing more irritation on the nerve and we call this the old pinched nerve. If you look right there where the blinking sign is right there, that's just showing you that the nerve energy is trying to make its way out. Kind of like the good analogy, like you're stepping on a garden hose trying to water a garden. Uh, the water is not getting all to the plant like the brain energy is not getting out of that nerve to where it's supplying. So wherever it's going, and remember this picture I just showed you over, uh, well, I don't want to take it off, but that other picture I showed you where all the nerves are controlling different areas. Well, if that nerve is going to this area or if it's going to the thyroid gland or it's going to the sinus, it's going to the eye, wherever that energy is not making its way can eventually lead to those kind of symptoms. So the purpose of this is reducing pressure off the nerve. Now, the technique I'm going to show you today is hopefully going to help millions of people out there, okay? But again, if you've had uh, spinal fusion, if you've had any significant injuries or actions, I always will tell you, you know, make sure you always check with your doctor that it's okay. Because I, again, I cannot recommend these things for everyone, but in general, it's very safe and very, very effective. Now, if we look at this picture here, uh, we're looking at compression. As the, as the vertebrae come down, that nerve, if you look right here, uh, that nerve is being compressed. So you can see the purpose of what I'm about to teach you today and the reason why I went through these different slides and these presentation is so you can understand what our premise is and what we're trying to achieve. Well, if you look here, it will show you to the left the compression or pinched nerve from the intervertebral disc being compressed on the nerve root. And if you look to the right, what we're trying to accomplish, we're trying to create more space on that off the nerve root. And we're trying to create more space to open up that space where that nerve root comes out to help regain normal shape of that disc, to help increase nutrients and water back into that disc because uh, once that disc becomes compressed, well, let's go back to this particular picture. I'll leave this on. Um, I have a hand towel here. I rolled up a hand towel. I want you to have a hand towel, not a big towel, and roll it up tightly just like this, okay? Don't worry about doing it right now. Just watch me. You can come back to the video and you can do it after. The first thing I want you to do is put it behind the lower part of your neck. Now, obviously, what I want you to do, I just want you just to bring your head back over the towel just several times. We're just opening up the facet joints, so the joints in the back, and you can bring a little higher up. Good. You can work your way up all the way up to the top of the neck below the occiput. We're increasing mobility here. Now, even if you have herniated disc or bulging disc, by just putting, bringing the head back over it, what we're doing is we're bringing the vertebrae back. And as we bring the vertebrae back, let me show you on a, uh, a picture on the spine here. As we bring, let's say that we've got, uh, remember that most disc conditions occur in the back part of the vertebrae, not the front. You have a herniated disc in the front and have no symptoms. If the disc is herniated, it's usually always 90, 90 something percent in the back. But as that disc comes back uh, this way, uh, what we're doing is as we bring the pressure back, as we bring our head back like this, we're pushing the annular fibers of that end and that disc forward again. We're kind of like, it, imagine it this way. Imagine um, that it's like a marshmallow and, you know, your finger's sticking out of the marshmallow. But if you come back over that area, we're trying to put the pressure back in to that disc. We're trying to decompress it. So by doing this particular technique, uh, just go, putting pressure and going back over, okay, this alone can really do miracles for you because we're breaking up adhesions. We're slightly, uh, we're just slightly putting movement into the spine, but putting pressure going back on the back part of the disc to allow 
the the herniation or the bulging disc to be pushed forward. Okay, don't worry so much technically about the scientific or bio, biomechanical perspective on this, but just for what it's worth, just leave that alone. Now, this takes us to the, the primary key thing I want to show you. And the reason why I like this towel rolled up tightly, um, very few people know about this. There's a groove underneath the occiput. And we can just take this, okay, I'm going to take my glasses off, all right? Uh, we're going to take this, and we're just going to put it tightly under the groove. It fits right under that groove. Uh, people don't realize that, but if you come underneath that occiput, and you just lift up under the occiput, it will stay tight right under that occiput. And all you're going to do here is you're just going to lift up, Okay, just enough to you lift that back occiput and you'll feel it open up and you're just going to hold that in that position about 15, 20 seconds and relax it. And you could do it again and you could do it a few times. But next thing I want you to do, I want you to go into a little flexion and I want you to go into flexion about 20 to 25 degrees. The reason why is because that's the best degrees that I have found that opens up the back part of that disc to reduce pressure off that nerve root. So you're gonna go and you're gonna pull up on a 20, 25 degree angle. Not straight up, but kind of up and forward. Good, and you'll, you'll get the hang of it when you do this. And you'll just hold that about 20 seconds and come back down. Okay, so what we're doing is we're lifting pressure off the nerve and then we're coming down after about 20 seconds and we're letting the compression and the normal load come back with gravity again. And that pumping mechanism, just doing that, can do remarkable, when I tell you remarkable, we use the word miraculous or miracles to your neck. Because this is kind of pumping the disc up and down. Self-traction, it's very, very safe. You're not pulling this thing hard as you can, just lifting it up about 20, 25 seconds and coming back down. But pulling up, in like a 20, 25 degrees where the head slightly flexed down, okay? That's the position that we're going to traction. So remember, when we traction, we're kind of going not straight up. The first time you can go straight up just to get the hang of it, but you're gonna be about 20, 25 degrees and you're gonna pull up in that direction. Now, some people, um, particularly many of my patients in the past, they have given me feedback and they said that when you're underneath, and you want to go ahead and lean your head a little to the left and pull up in that left direction, you're going to be pulling up on one of the facet joints on those on that one side of the spine, those multiple facet joints on that side of the spine. You could do it that way. You can come to the other way. Why is that effective? Okay, I'll explain why in just, in just a second. Okay, you could do it the other way. You could just laterally flex about 20 degrees. Let's explain why. These are the facet joints, and we're almost finished here. Um, generally, when a disc herniates, it usually herniates what they call posterior and laterally. So instead of the disc coming straight back, it goes back into the side or it goes back into the other side. Discs do not usually herniate medially. Most of it goes posterior straight back and off to the side. By pulling traction off to the side, what we're doing is we're lifting off those facet joints. We're opening up more space on one side of the vertebrae. You see, these are called facet joints. And these facet joints sit on each other. This is how the bones sit down, particularly in this normal curve. And so the purpose of that lateral traction that very few people ever talk about, and I think it's good, particularly that we can control it on our own. I do not recommend lateral traction if you are using a machine or an over the door traction unit because there's too much weight. But if you have control of your own neck and you start getting the hang of it and you say, you know what, I did this and I feel it feels lighter, which hopefully it will. I feel less pain or less sensation or less symptoms, hopefully you will. And then what you'll do is you'll keep doing it little bits at a time. Now, the reason why I say little bits of a time is because muscles have memory. So when these muscles have memory, these muscles are used to these particular joints being in this position for ancient periods of times, as long as you had it. So when you start making changes, you're making small changes over time to give your muscles time to change. This may take several weeks, it may take a couple of months, but 
you'll know if you're going in the right direction. Because if you notice that your symptoms start to diminish and your range of motion starts to increase and your condition starts to feel better, we hit it head on. Well, there you have it. Um, I could still see you, but I could see you better now. But anyways, I hope that this really does you a lot, a lot of good. I want to say blessings to everyone out there and with lots of good health and uh, a, a, a great new year. And and whenever you decide to listen to this video, whoever's listening to it, um, let's just wish you just lots of great health for you and your loved ones and your family. I ask you to subscribe, get these notifications. Um, I am on the top of the list of cutting edge uh, information when it comes down to the spine, the neck, and nutrition. And I'll do my best to try to keep this world as healthy as we can. So please subscribe. subscribe, And most important, please share these videos because uh, they're really helping so many people. I can tell you, uh, trust me, they're helping many people out there. I've got so many beautiful emails and I wish I can respond back to all of them, but I, I try to do my best. Anyways, um, Check out my Facebook motivational doc. Please leave a review over there for me. I really appreciate that. Most important, make this a beautiful, healthy, and happy uh, one for all of you and for all the families out there. May God bless you and continue to stay proactive. We love you very much, and we'll be with you real soon. Bye-bye now.